To show the application of recursion, there is nothing better than the puzzle Tower of Hanoi. Tower of Hanoi is a very interesting puzzle and many of you may already know about it. So uh, th there is a story that there's a place called Hanoi, uh, I think in Vietnam, uh, where there are three towers and uh, with about 100 discs and the monks there have to move all the discs from one tower to another tower uh, by using certain rules and it is said that by the time uh, all the discs are moved from one tower to the other, the world will end. But the world has already ended many times now and it's probably become quite boring to even talk about it. But anyways, so let's go over the rules of the puzzle. Okay. Now here we have three towers A, B and C and we have some discs in tower A which are arranged in the increasing order of size from top to bottom. And what we are supposed to do is to move all the discs from tower A to tower C using tower B as an intermediate such that at no point of time a bigger disc comes on top of a smaller one, alright? And one more rule is that we can only move one disc at a time, alright? So let's look at a few examples to make the idea clear. So let's say we just have one disc. So this is simple, we can just move disc 1 from the tower A to tower C directly and we are done. By the way, we have named the towers and numbered the discs so that we can track the movement. And in our program, when we write one, we will be printing out these messages. Alright? So if there are two discs, we number them as one and two, one being on top of two. Alright? And this order of numbering the disc is important for our algorithm. So in general, we will start numbering the topmost disc as one, which would also happen to be the disc with the smallest radius and then keep increasing the numbers as we go down the stack of disks. And in this case of two disks is also quite simple. We first move disk 1 from tower A to B. Then what do we do? Move disk 2 from tower A to C, right? And finally move disk 1 from tower B to C, alright? And this was also quite simple and something which everyone can figure out. Then what about if we have three disks? And you will notice that by adding more disks, the complexity of the problem increases and slowly with few more disks, it will become much harder to write all the steps correctly. Anyways, so before moving on, you may want to pause the video here and write the steps yourself. This one is also quite easy. So what we can do is that we move disk 1 to tower C from tar A, then move disk 2 from A to B, move disk 1 from C to B, move disk 3 from A to C and now we would like to move both these disks 1 and 2 to tower C. But because we can only move one disk at a time and without keeping the bigger disk on top of the smaller one at any point of time, we first need to move disk 1 from tower B to tower A and then move disk 2 from tower B to C and then finally move disk 1 from A to C, alright? And this was a little more intense than the first two cases. And as the number of disks increase, identifying the steps become increasingly complex. And actually it is so complex that it will really be hard to write a program which moves these disks iteratively. And this is where recursion comes to help and makes this problem quite easy to program. All you have to do is to focus a little and align your thoughts along the lines of recursion. So let's say we write a method move which takes four parameters. The first one is the number of disks that need to be moved. And then the other three parameters can be of char or string types representing the towers. So the first one out of these three is tower from. So we passed A here. The second is tower 2. That is the disks are to be moved from tower A to tower C. And the third parameter is the intermediate tower where we pass B as argument. So when we call the move method with these parameters, we mean that move N disks from tower A to tower C using tower B as the intermediate. 
and first you should convince yourself that this is possible. That is, we can move all these disks from A to C using another tar. And if you are convinced, let's proceed. So if we can do that, it essentially means that we should be able to move these n-1 disks from tower A to tower B using C as an intermediate, right? Think about it. Because the nth disk is the largest in radius, it can remain untouched when we are moving those other n-1 disks like that, right? So we should be able to move these n-1 disks from A to B using C. Which means that we can call the move method for n-1 disks from A to B using C, isn't it? Notice that the order of arguments for from tower to tower and using tower has changed, alright? Then we can move disk n from A to C, which is what we can print. And then we recursively move these n minus 1 disks from tower B to tower C using tower A. So we can again call the move method recursively with this different set of parameters. And this whole recursive approach just needs to be singed in a little. And to help with that, let's revisit that 3 disk example again. So here, what we are saying is that we want to move three disks from tower A to C using tower B. Which means that we can move two disks from tower A to B using C. And what we did earlier was that we first moved disk 1 from A to C. Then we moved disk 2 from A to B. And then moved disk 1 from C to B. So essentially the state of the system right now is exactly as if we move the two disks from tower A to B using tower C, right? Which was done recursively. And we don't really care about the details. So we are done with this part. Now we move disk 3 from A to C. And finally we move these two disks from B to C using tower A. And if we see the details, that is what we end up doing, right? So as you can see, thinking recursively makes this problem much easier to solve. But of course, it needs a little practice and patience to be able to align your mind in that direction. And of course, we need to put a breaking condition. But let's implement this program and we will talk about the breaking condition there. Before moving on to the next lecture, I suggest that you try implementing the program yourself first. It's okay to try and fail, but it's not okay not to have tried. Alright?